long, long ago, back when COVID first started, we all asked the same question in the morning. Where's my fuck off cough? But after that, we would look outside the window and ask, what the fuck is that? And you would see a big, big fuck off fireball in the sky. Today we call it David, but before we used to call it the sun. My name is Wojak Brakowski, and today's video is a subjectively objective subjective analysis of the history of Julius Caesar, using nothing but caffeine, methamphetamine, and the answers that some random people gave me. I- Oh, fuck. Julius Caesar was an American Roman firefighter born in 1996 to a Canadian family of four. Ever since his infancy, his family would report that ever since the destruction of Alba Longa, which is the name of my house in Minecraft, Julius could never stop talking about his immense hatred to elephants. He would frequently compare Dolby to a vermin and himself to an exterminator. His immense hatred to elephants is most likely due to the popular game Five Nights at Freddy's, as the animatronics do get a bit quirky at night. At the age of three, Julius said his first first sentence, fuck those senators, and so began his lifelong journey in politics. He would spend his childhood arguing with his parents about how Rome sucks, and that in the right hands, his hands, Rome would be home to the greatest Starbucks the world would ever see. Julius was always reportedly relentless in his argument, so much so that one day Julius managed to argumentatively eviscerate his own dad, causing Julius to be the head of the family at the age of 16, which is exactly 53 away from a very funny number. In his 16th birthday, Julius's uncle gave Mario decided he would start a civil war against his rival Lick My Cornelius Slut III. Both sides engaged in brutal combat in Command and Conquer 2. The reason Lick My Cornelius III was in such uproar was because Julius had recently been nominated as the Dial Up Starcraft champion and married Cornelius's daughter Cornelia. Lick My Cornelius III absolutely despises Starcraft and so he made it his lifelong mission to completely ruin Julius's life. Cornelius was losing the fight against Gay Mario right before he opened Cheat Engine and gave all of his units infinite HP. Hey, motherfucker! Come here and give me your liver! It's okay, nigga, I got- Game Mario was infuriated, but couldn't do anything as a dick-shaped pentagram was rapidly tattooed into his forehead, condemning him as gay, causing him to spontaneously explode. Following Cornelius's victory, Julius's connections whoa, whoa, to the whoa, old whoa, regime whoa, whoa, had made whoa, whoa, him a target whoa, 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 for hey, the new hey, one. Hey, hey. As the old saying goes, I think I just shit my pants. Julius was stripped of his inheritance. His StarCraft account was banned and he was stripped from his priesthood too, effectively disallowing him from contacting spiritual customer support. However, Julius refused to divorce his wife Cornelia, but not wanting to end up like his uncle gay Mario, he decided he would go into hiding and set his Battle.net online status to offline. Julius was so insecure after Cornelius banned his StarCraft account that he believed it was safer to join the military in the medieval times. And so he left East Madagascar and joined the army, serving under Mark Minot's thermostat and Sauce Waiter. He would serve the military with distinction, winning the Darwin Award for his part in the battle against Earswap consumers. He would go on a mission to Bichinia to secure the assistance of King Nikokaro Avocado's fleet, but he would spend so much time there that rumors arose of an affair with the king. Julius is gay. Julius would vehemently deny it for the rest of his life. Cornelius would then kill himself by accidentally blocking his liver on steam, causing him to suffer a ruptured gastric ulcer and dying a very painful death. Julius, upon hearing of this, felt safe enough to return to East Madagascar, and so he took to the seas and was kidnapped by a bunch of pirates that held him prisoner. He also joked about how he would raise a fleet, pursue, capture, and crucify the pirates. They laughed at him. So when he did crucify them, he also posted cringe in each one of their Facebook accounts. On his way back from East Madagascar, Julius received the promotion from Ding Dong Adjuster to Ear Swab Oppressor, which was his first step into a political career. Unfortunately, during this time, his wife Cornelia was caught using cheats in StarCraft when she was about to lose. Shortly after, she flooded the chat with IP addresses. Her account was later banned and she was executed. Julius was of course very sad over these news, for a short time, 
because he got married again. It didn't last long though, he married Pompeia and later divorced her for her embroilment in the Bone Zone scandal. After serving as bitch ass in 69 BC, Julius was appointed to govern Hispanic Banana, which is the west side of Penis Peninsula. However, Julius's chronic coke addiction brought him a great debt. It also didn't help that his investments in Bitcoin backfired. He had to satisfy his creditors before he could leave. And so he turned to Marcus Licus Microvis, which at the time was the Roman Jeff Bezos. Crevice agreed to pay off some of Julius's debt in return for political support in the steam forums. To avoid becoming too far into debt, he decided he would take the deal and incessantly upvote every post Crevice made on the forums. Having had dealt with the debt problem for now, Julius left to continue his military career, demolishing two Zerg mains in solo queue and earning the honorary title Zerg Penetrator 62. However, all was not good, as an unfortunate choice was required of Julius. The honorary title of Zerg Penetrator Penetrator 62 is a required title for any military general to apply to become legally on acid. However, Julius also wished to take on a shit poster ship, the most elite position in PUBG Mobile. If he were to apply to become legally on acid, he would have to remain a soldier and skip out on the shit poster ship as he could not do both in the time available to him. Faced with the choice between acid and soldier, he chose the acid. After having a tumultuous relationship with StarCraft 2, Julius decided that in order to prepare for his acid permit battle, he needed to prepare both physically and mentally. The trials ahead were going to be extensive and he needed to be many things. Extremely strong, huge amounts of stamina, wisdom of the ancients, patience of a mountain. And so he decided to engage in pay to win services and play Clash of Clans. He would practice strength by throwing his phone as far as he could after losing to an unranked plebeian stamina by doing three squats every time he bought premium currency, wisdom by learning ways to locate IP addresses through his phone, and patience by resisting the urge to call everyone in his clan a bunch of homosexual slurs for not engaging in the clan war for over three seconds. And when the day of the battle arrived, god damn it he was ready. He would face Lord Cocaine himself with his legendary reputation for corruptibility, and my mom with belt in one hand and sandal in the other she is known for her ruthless prowess and deadly accuracy in combat. His strength taught him that the best defense lies in the offense. In patience he learned and studied the weaknesses of his opponents. With stamina he never wavered or flinched when executing any risky maneuvers and with wisdom he realized he could just bribe everyone into declaring him as winner. After defeating a crack addict and an abusive parent, Julius embraced his first bottle of muriatic acid and proceeded to experience his first vision of David. The vision showed him that no matter how large your testicles are, there's always cock and cockroach. As a wise man once said, Julius's first vision of David was quite vague. However, one thing was clear and it is that he needed to obtain more political power if he was to invent David. And so he went on a power-hungry rampage, creating the first triangle rule that states any man with triangle-shaped nipples are not welcome in his bookworm club. Julius then proposed a law for bronze rank to Overwatch League, stating that no man in bronze rank is allowed to engage in step bro activities with their teammates. And then the Christian rapper Kanye West was about to call the proposal law a bad omen and void it, at which point Dream replied to his tweet effectively doxing him. After a lot of harassment, Kanye West, out of fear for his own life, retired to Notre Dame where he spent the rest of the year occasionally making the bad omen claim, at which point people would reply to him with his latest IP address. When Julius received his permit, the government tried to limit his future power by throttling his internet whenever he would enter a ranked match. However, through sheer willpower, he would scream loud enough at the microphone for his teammates to win the match just so they can leave faster. This strategy would be one of his greatest legacies as it single-handedly brought his rank from stinky bronze to stanky gold, giving him governorship of Citrus Ball. However, his governorship took many notes from blizzards and when it ended, he would just barely avoid prosecution by getting the fuck out of there. Julius was still deeply in debt, but there was money to be made by stealing it from others. And aside from extortion, the acid that he ingested had given him hallucinations of the British and Germans. The hallucinations that he encountered were unclear, 
as he yelled at the local janitor a bunch of slurred ramblings and something about a salad. Nevertheless, he somehow obtained an extreme level of hatred towards a bunch of tribes and the British. He first defeated the tribes in a Valorant anti-cheat ban evasion speedrun of which he won, and then challenged the British to a reverse spelling bee, which he very quickly lost. This unfortunately marks the moment where the British had won. But fortunately, this marks the moment where I inhale yet another cup of coffee. So unfortunately, the story might start to become historically inaccurate. For any of these mistakes, I will fix by adding a side note in editing. Despite Julius's unfortunate loss against the British, he had proven to be an elaborate commander replying to three tweets from Dream and dodging about 71 doxing attempts. However, while Julius was out abusing women in a classic Blizzard fashion, the Senate at the time was growing worried that Julius was growing too powerful. Eventually, worries of a civil war had grown. Julius' Twitter account had risen to rival the Senate, and the Senate didn't like him constantly teabagging everyone he killed. After many negotiations and compromises falling through, Julius sent a final offer to the Senate, dictating that they can't rank up over silver and have to legally be a bitch ass for Julius to disarm his Twitter expose video. The Senate had enough and publicly announced that Julius is a bitch ass whore thinking it would work out for them. Julius then practiced the classic strategy commonly seen amongst the best players in tournaments, hold W and never look back. After a fat shit and a quick fart, he defeated the Senate and stole the leadership position of cum producer. With all the power he could ever have, he realized it was time to begin the David project. However, it would be cut short. <laughs> he fucking died. Fucking died. After he died in a ball bust off gone wrong, the entirety of Rome had went into uproar. Everyone was enraged that their favorite level 10 crack addict raid boss had died. And so people entered a frenzy, flooding Julius's Twitter with the IP addresses of everyone who participated in the creation of SPF Sunstream. So what have we learned here today? Well, we learned that it's extremely difficult to develop games and sexually abuse your employees simultaneously. We also learned that when it comes to making videos, an absence of motivation, Adderall, does wonders. Remember to smash that subscribe button harder than my parents threw me into a wall as a kid. If we can get at least three bruises, that'll make my day slightly better. And now I'll see you in two weeks after I recover from my drug overdose. I'm gonna have an aneurysm now. Goodbye. Joe Biden! Joe Biden! Joe Biden! Where are you, man? Bernie Isaac! Bernie, where are you? Bernie! Bernie! I don't know!